हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर के एल बुंदर वर्किंग एज असोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस इंस्टीट्यूट दैट इज गवर्नमेंट विद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड ह्यूमैनिटीज अमरावती सिंस टू इयर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल I welcome all of you, dear friends, dear students, in the MSc first year class from various as well as remote areas of this region, as well as outside this region. So once again, I welcome you all in MSc mathematics for these two years, and hope that academically. these two years will go successfully to all of you okay we will see in this first semester i will take a complex analysis paper okay before go to syllabus of complex analysis i will just introduce myself to you because online actually i want you want to introduce everybody to me but because of this pandemic situation we have to take online classes so that it is difficult to introduce but in a week we will take one lecture your direct one to one lecture for your difficulties if any and through the video lecture we will start the syllabus and up to that stage where you cannot come directly to the classes we will meet by online lectures so i introduce myself my specialization is functional analysis difference equation fixed point theory integral transform transformation etc i have 20 years of teaching experience at uc and which level my qualification is msc in mathematics ma phd as well as set in mathematics i have recognized research guide and pg teacher under me five candidates awarded phd degree and Five candidates are working for PhD. I have published seventy-nine research post papers in journals and five books. Two research projects I have completed, and total conferences participated in seventy-one. International are thirty-nine, national are thirty-seven, while others are state level. I have also delivered invited talk in various conferences. Also organized fourteen conferences and worked as a different members of committees at institute level as well as university level. Most important that I worked as a chairman of board of studies of Swami Ramanandit Marathwada University, Nandir. And before this institute, I worked at NES Science College, Nandir, where I worked. as a head of the post graduate department in that college along with various committees also okay so with this a little bit introduction we will go for introduction of now syllabus we we'll go for introduction of syllabus This is the syllabus of our university of complex analysis. There are five units in this syllabus. Unit one regarding complex integrations. Unit two regarding some other Taylor's theorem, open mapping theorem, Cauchy-Gorset theorem, etc. Then third unit similarities and it's a classification. Fourth unit is about residues. And some other theorems, and fifth unit is about analytic continuation. This syllabus is already on the website of 
Swami uh, SGBA Amravati, and easily you can download it. I also give you the file of the syllabus through Google Classroom. We made a class via Google Classroom on which every day's lecture will be uploaded on that Google Classroom. Also, it is available on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> okay, so this is the syllabus. We don't want to waste our more time on the syllabus because the copy will be given to you. And these are the references. Important references are these one first, second, then fourth, fifth. Okay. Kunu Swami, Foundations of Complex Analysis, Narosa Publishing House, second edition, 1967, which is available in market, as well as which can be um, can be bought through online also. Most of the syllabus, or we will refer these books, first books for your uh, completion of syllabus. Then these are the supporting uh, books. H.S. Kasana is there, J.N. Sharma is there, Oshista is there, Rudin is there. Plenty of books are available on market. But for this syllabus, I will refer your first book, that is Kunnusami. And I, we will take the use of Kasana, then Sham Outland series, Jay and Sharma, and Vashista. These books we will. There is one more book, which is not in this list, but it is Herb and Silverman. Herb and Silverman. Complex analysis by Herb, uh, Herb Silverman and Yes Kunnusami. This author Kunnusami, along with Yes Silverman, has written a very nice book also. Then, especially Herb Silverman's complex analysis also there, which is also available. So, so many books on complex analysis are there, you can refer it. So, for this, for our syllabus, for, for the syllabus of this university, it will start from that coach's integral formula. And before that, so many things are there. I think for this university, these things already covered in a syllabus of BSc Mathematics. Syllabus of BSc Mathematics. I request you kindly go through the basic syllabus of complex analysis, which contain, first of all, algebra of complex numbers. Algebra of complex numbers. Then so you have to go for this. Then functions, no doubt, complex value functions. In functions, we know that definition of function, then types of function that is on to, in to, one to one, etc. Then uh, limit of a function, continuity of a function, differentiability of a function. Then third goes to analytic analytic functions. Third chapter is analytic functions. So from any book which are in the references, you go for these three chapters first of all. You go thoroughly for these two. Actually, already this you, you have done there. Uh, you studied in BSc class, but again take a book of complex analysis and you go thoroughly through these three chapters okay for today's introduction uh highlights will be taken here okay so for this algebra of complex number actually what is meant by complex number the complex number is a number of this form a plus i into b and which is already always denoted by Z, where a comma b belongs to r, where a and b are real numbers. A number represented as a plus i b is called a complex number. a and b are real numbers. This a is called a real part of complex number and b is called b is called imaginary part of complex number. 
you know that a is the real part and b is the imaginary part the set of all complex numbers is denoted by this letter c set of all complex numbers is denoted by c we know this now how why this complex number occurs or why this there is a necessity to introduce your complex number to introduce complex number one number is different i and we take it is equal to square root of minus 1 isn't it very first system a number system comes with which one first system comes with natural numbers natural numbers what natural numbers are there starts with 1 2 3 4 6 right then then there was a necessity to one more number and it was zero so again this natural number system is extended and whole numbers arrives there and which are there zero one two three and etc that means to solve the equation of such type x minus one equal to zero or x minus five equal to zero its solution is x equal to one x equal to five which comes here right but there are some equations whose solution is not included here and such number is there now this x equal to 0 nothing is there nothing means what x equal to 0 so scientist included this number in this system and then we get a whole number system now if such if same equation is of this type x plus 1 equal to 1 0 and x plus 5 equal to 0 then this gives x equal to minus 1 x equal to minus 5 which are which is not present here so we scientist must have to introduce one more system which we call it as set of integers and it becomes 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 and etc so this is third number system we have then again we cannot find the solutions of some equations which occurs here therefore one more number system comes there and we call it as a real number system set of real numbers in real numbers two types of numbers are there rational as well as irrational so set of rational and irrational is called now set of real numbers now so many years we finished our work on this real real number system okay but after that we get some equations x square plus 4 Equal to zero type means what? X square equal to minus four means find the number whose square is minus four. But for as far as real number system, there is no real number whose square is negative because we have seen one property: square of every real number is positive. So we got this. Now again, question mark for this, and therefore scientist introduced. I is equal to square root of minus one, and therefore this becomes x equal to square root of minus one into four. That becomes square root of four into square root of minus one. It gives plus or minus two into. So for this purpose, this complex number system comes. So. The number of the form a plus i b, which is denoted by z, is a complex number. There is a addition of complex number, subtraction of complex number, product of complex number, and division of complex. Number. Okay, what about addition of so this every time your if z equal to x one plus i y one z one equal to, which can be represented by order pair. X one comma y one and z two equal to x two plus i y two, which is represented by x two comma y two, 
then how to find their addition z1 plus z2 we know that it is x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 that is a number whose real part is x1 plus x2 imaginary part is y1 plus y2 same thing will happen for minus okay next second k times of z if i want to find k times of z then it gives kx ky that is multiply by k to real part as well as imaginary part then third property was z1 into z2 z1 into z2 what property is that z1 into z2 so it is x1 plus i y1 into x2 plus i y2 and if we solve this you will get x1 x2 minus y1 y2 this is the real part of that complex number and then x1 y2 plus x2 y1 is the imaginary part of that complex numbers okay so real part is x1 x2 minus y1 y2 and imaginary part is x1 y2 plus x2 y1 to obtain z1 by z2 this is of this form x1 plus i y1 upon x2 plus i y2 right to take this multiplication you have to multiply by x2 minus i y2 for numerator and to denominator also and this becomes if we take the multiplication here it will get something equal to x1 x2 minus i into x1 y2 plus i into y1 x2 minus i square y1 y2 whole divided by x2 square right minus i square y2 square that is your first x1 x2 plus y1 y2 real part right is the real part and now here what imaginary part is i into imaginary part is only you have to write so this is equal to the number is of this part x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus x2 y1 minus x1 y2 i whole divided by x square plus x x2 square plus y2 square in this way you can find the division of two complex numbers division of two complex numbers okay now we know that there are some properties that is z is always equal to z then second property is if z1 equal to z2 then z2 also equal to z1 symmetric property reflexive property and if z1 equal to z2 and z2 equal to z3 then z1 also equal to z3 transitive property is also satisfied by this equality side one more thing is there if z equal to x plus i y then it's a complex conjugate is denoted by z bar and it is equal to x minus i complex conjugate is denoted by z bar and it is x minus i now we know that if we want to obtain real part of z here so real part of z equal to x is nothing but z plus z bar upon 2 and imaginary part of z equal to y is nothing but z minus z bar upon y so you can find real part and imaginary okay the real numbers can be represented on real line but the representation of complex number is a point in complex plane representation of complex number how we represent the complex numbers 
Suppose this is your x-axis, uh, y-axis, and this is about x-axis. Then your z equal to a plus i b is ordered to your a comma b. That is a number. That is a point whose x coordinate is a and y coordinate is b. Suppose this is a and this is something b. Then this number is represent z equal to a plus i into. For example, if we want to find two plus three i, two plus three i, that we solve. Okay. So if I take this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. So two plus three r is two comma three. So one, two, two, and three. Somewhere here, here. This is our number, two comma three, which is equal to two plus. If we want to go for two minus three r, that is, the x coordinate is two, y coordinate is minus three, right? X coordinate is two, y coordinate is minus three. This is our two comma minus three. If we want to take three minus two plus three r, minus two plus three r, how will we get minus two? Oh, sorry, this is actually minus two plus three r, not. Minus two plus three i, two plus three i, two minus three i is somewhere here. One two three. This is two comma minus three, and somewhere here minus two comma minus three. That is minus two minus three i plus two minus three i, two plus three i, and here it is minus two plus three i. So these complex numbers can be represented on a plane by using this. Moreover, after this, we have z equal to for z equal to a plus i b. One concept is there, modulus of z, and which is given by square root of a square plus b square. So, if we join this, then this length o z is called modulus of z. Modulus of z and theta equal to tan inverse of b upon a, which we call argument of z, which we call argument of z. Okay, argument of z, tan inverse of b upon a, we call it as argument of z. Means, what about tan inverse of three by two? So this angle, angle made by Positive x-axis with number z. This is our theta. This is theta, and this is mod of theta. That is modulus of. Theta. So distance of point from origin is the modulus of that number, and the angle made by x-axis with this line is called argument of z. There are some properties of modulus of z as well as Argument of z, modulus of z as well as argument of z, in which first is mod of z1 z2 equal to mod z1 into mod z, right? Mod z1 into mod z. One more property is there. Mod z is same as mod z bar. Mod z is same as mod z bar. Then third is mod z equal to Square root of is mod z square equal to. It is only a square plus b square. Mod z equal to. You can write z into z bar. Also. What is z into z bar? Z is what x plus i y or a plus i b. Z bar is x minus i y. If we take its multiplication, we get x square plus y square, which is mod z square. So mod z square equal to z into z bar. Similarly. Property we know this mod z1 upon z2 equal to mod z1 upon mod z2. There are some properties of conjugates also. 
सेड वन सेड टू बार इक्वल टू सेड वन बार इनटू सेड टू बार सिमिलरली सेड वन अपॉन सेड टू बार इक्वल टू सेड वन बार अपॉन सेड टू बार ओके एंड मॉडुलस ऑफ जेड इस सेम एज मॉडुलस ऑफ सेड बार राइट मॉडुलस ऑफ जेड इस सेम एज मॉडुलस ऑफ actually mod z1 plus z2 is not every time mod z1 plus mod z2 but it is less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 this is called triangle inequality we call it as triangle inequality these are all basic things we are just revising all of these two. we are uh, all of this okay we are just revising all of this we know the de moivre's theorem also your every complex number can be written in the form of a plus ib equal to r e to the power i theta where r equal to square root of a square plus b square right and theta equal to tan inverse of b by a tan inverse of b upon a so can you can convert complex number into this number and this number into this moreover e to the power i theta is always cos theta plus i into sin theta we know this e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta from this we have one property cos theta plus i sin theta to the power n equal to cos n theta plus i into sin cos n theta plus i into sin n theta there is a one concept of cube root of unity the square root of unity square root of unity then cube root of unity in the same way nth root of unity nth root of unity nth root of unity we know that what about square root of unity square root of 1 equal to plus or minus 1 either plus 1 or minus 1 is the square root of 1 if we want to find cube root of unity equal to something z cube root of unity is z that means z cube equal to 1 this gives z cube minus 1 cube equal to 0 this gives z minus 1 into z square plus z plus 1 equal to 0 so z equal to 1 is the one third root of z Uh, one third root of one. So this will give z equal to one, and second z equal to minus one plus or minus square root of b square minus four ac divided by two. That is minus one plus or minus root three r divided by two. Therefore, z one equal to one, z two equal to minus one plus u root of square root of three i by two. And z t z t equal to minus one minus square root of t i divided by two. So these three are the cube roots of unity, right? So I will call this is w. If I call this as w, then this becomes w square, and this becomes w cube because w cube is one. So If W is one cube root of unity, then other cube roots are W square and one. Okay. In the same way, you can obtain nth root of unity. Nth root of unity. So we can obtain a number which which nth root which n power is One. and so there are n number should be there and so if one is w or omega then it's a square omega square omega cube up to omega to the power n these are the 
n roots of unity these are the n roots of unity where this omega is e to the power 2 pi i by n so by considering n is equal to whatever you want this is the n root of unity w equal to e to the power 2 pi i upon n 2 pi i upon n in this way uh, we can find n root of unity one more thing is there see here if one minute if as like this here we know that if w is the or omega is the cube root of unity and w is non if w is a complex number then always z square plus z plus 1 should be equal to 0 1 plus z plus z square is equal to 1 so in the same result we can also say that it is w if omega is the or we can say that w is the complex cube root of unity a uh, complex nth root of unity then we get one such equation 1 plus w plus w square plus up to plus w to the power n minus 1 is always equal to 0 this is again famous relation very famous relation 1 plus w plus w square plus up to plus w to the power n minus 1 equal to 0. This is regarding the complex number system and its algebra. We can go for functions. Functions means what? Complex value functions. Complex value functions. complex value functions now we know that in earlier we have seen real value functions we will go for here complex value what was there f of x equal to something sin x cos x x square e to the power x and many more these types of functions are called real value where the domain set belongs to r as well as image set belongs to r so a mapping from r to r a mapping from r to r that is image set or co domain set is the set of real numbers is called real value function the function whose value is real now here the functions are either r or z to set of complex numbers so either set of real or complex numbers to complex numbers so your image set should be something that that is f of z equal to u plus i into v your image of this form u plus i into v that number should be in the complex plane so such types of functions are called complex value functions all the remaining parts are same you can go for that that is what is meant by one to one function then what is meant by on to function what is my in to function and so on how you can add the two functions subtract the two functions take union of two function take division of two function what is meant by limit of function then here in the we know that in the limit as x approaches to a here in place of this x limit as z tends to a or this number should be of this part z tends to a plus i b of this part there is only difference between limit then continuous function means if limit exists and its value and limit coincide then we say that the function is continuous function yeah the function is continuous function and you can see the see all terms which are similar to that all terms which are similar in complex numbers okay that is the case there now 
this this term is just repetition of a real number system then the important concept actually it starts from analyticity analyticity of function oh yeah folks we know that a function is said to be differentiable if limit as h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h if this limit exists then we say that it is f dash x x that is derivative of real valued function in place of that if limit as h tends to 0 f of z plus h minus f of z divided by h equal to we call f dash at z then we say that if this limit exists then we say that function is differentiable right function is differentiable and its derivative is denoted by f dash at z or you can also write it as d by dz of f of z but this is a change here also h approaches to 0 here also h approaches to 0 but this h in this form x plus i y this tends to 0 that means this is also ordered pair this is also ordered pair this is also ordered pair this is the concept of differentiability of a complex value differentiability of a of a complex valued function differentiability of a complex valued function okay now what is mean by a function is analytic from this the same result holds for every differentiable function is continuous every differentiable function is continuous same result as in real value functions converse may not be true converse may not be true is the example so if it is not true then we must give one example which is called counter example and that mod z there was mod x here was mod z mod z is continuous at zero but not differentiable at zero but not differentiable at zero. so this is the counter example and again the proof is in the book which is not the part of uh, your syllabus here it's it is not the part of your syllabus here itself okay now the most concept is analytic the function f of z is said to be analytic or this has one more name which is called holomorphic at a belongs to complex plane if f of z is differentiable f of z is differentiable at every point of at every point of some neighborhood of a some neighborhood of a some neighborhood of a okay actually this is the definition of analytic function now what is mean by function is differentiable at a point and function is analytic at a point f of z is differentiable at a and f of z is analytic at a See here, function is said to be differentiable at a means this condition should be satisfied means your this should be satisfied f of z minus f of a upon z minus a limit as z tends to a exists and then it is called derivative of f of z at z equal to a this is the for the point only but analyticity is some extended part function is said to be analytic at a means it should be differentiable 
differentiable but see if f of z is differentiable at every point of some neighborhood of a not only at that point but in some neighborhood of a suppose a is here point a means what x plus i y so this function must be differentiable in some neighborhood of a if it is so then so we show that then we say that the function is analytic at then we say that function is analytic at so not only it is necessary differentiable at a but also at all points in some neighborhood of a so whatever neighborhood you can choose either you choose this one neighborhood or the smallest neighborhood or the smallest or this largest neighborhood the function should be differentiable at every point in this neighborhood then we say that f of z is analytic function at a analytic function at a for example for example f of z equal to mod z square what about mod z square f of z equal to mod z square means x square plus what is mod z mod z is square root of x square plus y square it is x square plus y square where z is equal to x plus i y so this function is it f dash z exists at 0 comma 0 that is the question yes it exists at 0 comma 0 so function is differentiable at 0 0 but it is not analytic at 0 0 because in the neighborhood of 0 0 your this function is not differential there are different values for this limit if we see that limit as x y tends to 0 comma 0 mod z square mod z f of z minus f of 0 that is x square plus y square minus 0 upon what about here x comma y tends to 0 comma 0 that is h tends to 0 that is h so something is here x comma y or x plus i y is there x plus i y so limit as now here h tends to 0 h i will take something there it, it is h1 comma h h1 comma k1 so i will take h1 plus i into k1 and it is x square plus f dash at 0 equal to limit as h tends to 0 one minute f dash at 0 equal to limit as h tends to 0 f of f of z minus uh, h tends to a right uh, h tends to 0 f of z minus f of 0 upon h it is like this so limit as h tends to 0 f of z is here mod z square minus 0 upon h it is like this Okay, mod z square. What is it? Limit as h tends to zero, x square plus y square upon h. H is means what? H one plus i into k one. H means what? H one plus i into k one. Now, see there. What about in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood, what is what? You have to find this limit. or h tends to not only zero but we have to take value of h as the values different from zero and on that this limit is different because h tends to zero plus k le different aayega and h tends to zero minus k le kya aayega different aayega it will goes to both uh, some zero plus and zero minus means some for left hand for a right hand so that is the case there and therefore this is the example where the function is differentiable at origin but it is not analytic at origin differentiable at origin but not analytic at origin so analyticity analyticity implies differentiability but 
converse may not be true and this is the example f of z equal to mod z there was one interesting result that is if a function is analytic then cr equation satisfied cr equations satisfied cr equations satisfied what cr equations are there if f of z equal to something u plus iv where u of xy plus c v z of xy and v is v of xy then if this function is analytic then uvx equal to vy that is do u by do x equal to do v by do y and u y equal to minus v x that is do u by do y equal to minus do v by do x these two called cr equations that is cauchy's human equations so if a function is analytic then it satisfies cr equation again converse is not true that is every function which satisfies cr equations may not be analytic there are some examples which are in the book okay so you can see that what is the example where the function satisfies cr equation but it is not analytic one more result is also there if a function is analytic then it is harmonic harmonic means what when we say that any function is harmonic u of x y is said to be harmonic if do to u upon do x square plus do to u upon do y square equal to zero if u is said to be harmonic then it, this condition is satisfied f is analytic means it's a both real and imaginary parts satisfy harmonic equations that is the case again converse may not be true so there are such types of results there are such types of results which are already in there which are already in there so you go through all these three chapters that is basic concepts of complex numbers that is algebra of complex numbers then complex value functions limit and conti limit continuity differentiability then analytic functions and some results on analytic function how to find a real part how to find imaginary part by using cr equations everything everything is there you can find it so my suggestion is that to for the next lecture you have to go thoroughly with these three chapters so this is the introduction of your complex numbers actual syllabus starts from your coach is integral but before that also we want to see what is mean by complex integration and what type of curves are there in next lecture we will go for that every day now a lecture will be uploaded there will be one lecture which is one to one lecture in a week where you can uh, uh, you can raise your queries there because what i found that i taken means online lecture of 20 to 25 lecture of second year but most of the people only 20% people can uh, attend those at that time and 80% people cannot attend because of some uh, problems there which pro which type of problems internet problem is there time problem is there etc etc all these problems are there. okay so for that we'll upload per day one lecture you go through it if you have any queries you can ask any time so with this we will stop here and in the next lecture we will go for next thing. thank you